last year uh, when I went for an interview at a central research institute in Pune. And I was really anxious, like I'm right now, because it was a very big thing for me. So there I was asked a few questions. And one of them was to name the top four medical conditions prevailing all around the world. Now I knew the names of so many diseases, but trust me, I had no clue about the top four ones. Somehow, based on my observations and past experiences, I came to an answer. And that too very confidently, because of course, I wanted to look very cool. Number one, cancer. This because me and my friends have lost an important person to blood cancer not too long ago. Number two, respiratory diseases. This because I could envision another one of my friends who had suffered from tuberculosis at an important stage of his life. And I could imagine how frightening it was for him. Number three, heart strokes and diseases. Well, I really got lucky on this one because I had read about a related case in the morning newspaper and that saved me another 10 points. And number four, diabetes. Now this came really easy because I could see it everywhere. And I'm sure you must have seen it too. So the interview went really well and I cleared it. But the story doesn't end here. Hello everyone, my name is Mona and I'm a biomedical researcher. And these days, I'm trying to dig deeper into the sweet truth of diabetes. In the present era, the list of most extensively investigated medical conditions includes diabetes, which is basically a chronic, non-communicable, heterogeneous endocrine disorder. Now, not many know what exactly an endocrine disorder is, and who cares? But we do know what diabetes is. It is that real struggle a person goes through when they have a box full of sweets right in front of them and all they can do is stare at it. Diabetes management is an everyday struggle which leaves one with a pile of medicines, insulin shots, pumps and what not. And even then it can still go way out of control. Let me tell you that the first documented evidence of diabetes dates back to the year 1425. Until 16th century, it was a big question mark. We humans took 200 years to figure out this clinical diagnosis and another 100 years to know what exactly is glucose, pancreas, insulin, how they all are connected and what are the complications. Now, we're living in the 21st century the era of millennial development, where we do have insulin backup, oral medicines, transplantation available right there. But we also have diabetes as the seventh leading cause of global deaths. Well, over the time period, diabetes has progressed. But we, we're still confined to the conventional therapies. Of course, advancements in treatment process are required. But do we need another hundred years for that? I totally understand that diabetes is a very sensitive topic and people are already struggling with it. But have you ever wondered that we ourselves are making this struggle harder? Now since we are digging deeper, let us first simplify the story of this uninvited and unwanted guest, Mr. Diabetes Mellitus. Now we eat food which has carbohydrates these carbohydrates, when they go inside your body, upon digestion, they get converted into glucose. Now, this glucose floats in your bloodstream from where it will be transported to different parts of the body. Now, cells of your body, in order to fulfill their energy needs, they need that glucose. But wait a minute. It isn't so easy for glucose to go right into the cell. This is where pancreas comes into the picture. It senses a rise in blood glucose level and secretes a hormone called insulin. Now, insulin works as the key to open the door of the cell and let the glucose step in. As you can see, this whole thing is mediated by insulin and glucose, and they are the protagonists. But just imagine, what if there is no insulin? Glucose won't be able to get into the cell and will pile up in your bloodstream 
And to add on this, even the stored fat, it get broken down into glucose. Now let me make this very clear. Blood is the carrier of glucose. It is not meant to harbor it. This is where things start to mess up and that's when you start noticing the signs and symptoms. Or maybe not. But diabetes has already begun with its game. What contributes to it? Definitely it is a poor urban lifestyle, erratic, unbalanced dietary patterns, stress which seems to have become unified with our modern lifestyle, and at last you can blame the genetic factors. Eventually the signs and symptoms show up. For example, blurred vision, slow healing of wounds, hunger pangs, thirst, frequent urination, and in extreme cases, organ failures followed by metabolic conditions like retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy. Despite these scary facts and figures, there exists a huge gap between the prevalence of diabetes and its treatment. So if I'm going to ask you about the common prescribed treatment measures which diabetic patients are usually prescribed, the answers are surely going to revolve around lifestyle changes, or oral medicines or insulin. But let us give it a second thought. Lifestyle changes, they centralize around exercise, diet control, and stress management. Now, honestly speaking, I quit listening when somebody mentions diet control. So for somebody like me, it is going to be very difficult. And talking about insulin, it is injectable. And yes, with time, those needles have improved but it still remains injectable. And talking about oral medicines, they revolve around getting rid of your blood glucose level, either by managing insulin or by managing glucose. Now this may seem really smooth, but what you don't know is that these pills you take, these synthetic drugs you take, they are toxic to your body. They are slowly absorbed by the body, and this has been proven by the research. Also, there are equally good chances of them being passed out of the body without being actually used up. So it is evident that the conventional therapies are certainly not a win-win. Now what to do? So here I bring you the sweet truth today based on my very own research work, which compels me to think, why not give a chance to the conventional, unconventional therapies? The research work titled Design Synthesis, Characterization, and Evaluation of Eugenol Derivatives bi with Biological Studies for Anti-Hyperglycemic Activity. Well, such a long name, no? What if I tell you to memorize it? Well, I'm not going to tell you for sure. So through this research work which centered around osimum, osimum is Tulsi, and the chemicals present in that plant, we were able to prepare about 32 novel drugs for diabetes based on something called pro-drug strategy, where we had combined eugenol and amino acids. Now you must be wondering what is eugenol? Can you identify that peculiar odor of a clove, that pungent spicy smell? That is the smell of eugenol and it shows amazing anti-diabetic activity. This is the research paper which worked as a baseline for my project. It shows that initial trials have shown that eugenol can actively control the glucose formation in your body and also inhibit AGEs. Now for AGEs, they are advanced glycation end products, so you can go back home and Google it. Well, moving ahead, I've written some medicinal plants and herbs for your convenience. Number one, Osimum, of course my favorite, <laughs> on which I worked. Stone apple, bale fruit, black plum, jamun, bitter guard, karela. Now, karela has its own fandom. Indian kino tree, ivy guard, gymnema sylvestra, which is good mar. All these show amazing, excellent results. And who knew onion and garlic could cure diabetes? Similarly, several herbal anti diabetic drugs are present in the market. But you're worried about the safety, efficacy, economic impact, right? Well, Ayurveda has a whole set of proven records. You'll be surprised to know 
that the International Ayurvedic Medical Journal says that about 400 medicinal plants and herbs exist for the diabetes management. But only a few have been scientifically recognized and evaluated. Well, we somehow have failed to realize its worth. Sir Thomas Edison said that the value of an idea lies in its implementation. You'll be surprised to know again that out of the total Indian population, only 0.03% of people offer Ayurvedic therapies for the management of their diabetes. And yes, they are successfully managing it. Where are we? So here comes the hardest part, our choice. The choice, are we really going to go for the seemingly easy way of buying drugs over the counter, popping or injecting them, which may seem really smooth and easy, but may land you in a deeper pothole of diabetes? Or are we going to turn the tables and off for the newfound therapies? We have an idea which awaits implementation. If you look at it, it is not really the battle between the conventional and the unconventional, but rather a need to make new breakthroughs. And newfound therapies based on Ayurveda seems to have some promising results for us. Well, every new idea looks crazy at first, but it is equally true that one cannot resist an idea whose time has come. And believe me, well, you have to believe me, this is such an idea. Thank you.